online games often contain rich and dynamic communities, hidden deep beneath the marketing, the sales, even most of its players, lies a community simply known as the Elite. These elite players within games often spend years or even decades honing their craft, pushing the game's design to its limits. This community of elite players is often a small, tight-knit circle that seldom welcomes newcomers. A casual player who encounters these elites are left with nearly few options in their position. Casuals don't comprehend the vast array of game knowledge these elite players employ, and the result of these encounters are often a swift, inevitable defeat. Many games have an underground group of elite players, and so too does the game Napoleon Total War, a game I myself have been an elite player in too, since 2014, and I have seen the rise and fall of my own clan, the 4 Ninth Legion. In today's episode of NTW Geographic, I will tell you the story of this community from my perspective. This is the fall of the 4 Ninth Legion, and why its fall meant the end of the NTW cultural development and lore. So just what was the 4 Ninth Legion? In order to tell you why the 4 Ninth is important, I must take you back now to its distant, humble beginnings. The year is 2011. This was the middle of the golden age for the Total War community across all of its games. The golden age of the Total War series. It seems like a mythical time today. It's largely believed to have been all the time prior to the release of Rome 2. The thing about the golden age is that it was very common for elite players to band together and form clans. These clans would often compete against one another and jockey for the title of being recognized as the most dominant clan in their game, or even across multiple games. Not all clans participated in this war for dominance, however. There were other clans whose sole niche was to sponsor events, so they'd host tournaments, they'd do, give, they'd do giveaways, they'd, you know, they'd roleplay, they'd do community engagement, general stuff that upkept the activity of the Total War community and kept pe people engaging with it. As an example, there, was, there used to be a clan who was so popular, they gained direct communication with the devs of the Total War series, and thus were able to influence the development of certain games like Shogun 2. But, moving along with the story of the Four Knight that was relevant to the Four Knight, the Four Knight was founded during this Golden Age. I became a player in the community during this Golden Age. I remember what it was like. I'm speaking from experience. So the Four Knight was born in the latter half of this Golden Age. The year that I was first introduced to the Total War community was 2012. I, the young little FSU Iron Overlord, was first recruited by Team FSU, an Empire Total War clan, a clan recognized as the greatest Empire Total War clan from roughly the year 2010 to 2013, and I was recruited during that clan's decline. Because Team FSU was declining in power, I was brought into uncertain times, at least in that part of the Total War community. This is largely what prompted me to attempt making my own clan. My first attempt was an absolute failure. It was a clan known as the Dark Shadow Empire. My first attempt, you know, it was nothing special. It's it barely even worth remembering, to be honest. Just remember that there was a clan before the Four Knight, because the Four Knight was my second attempt, and this time I had help. This time I had two others who helped found the clan with me. And yes, contrary to you might believe, I am not the sole founder of the Four Knight. There were two others. 
there are a lot of events that happen with the floor night. There's a lot of story that I can cover. It's too much for me to put in this video. That's not what this video is about. What I am going to do is tell you why the floor night was an important clan. First of all, the first key feature about the floor night was actually a feature of our circumstances. We ended up gaining a reputation of being a noob clan because we were largely recruiting noobs and these noobs would go out and they'd face bigger clans and then they'd lose and they'd make us look bad. So the Four Ninth was a clan that was constantly having to prove itself because we were recruiting noobs. And that's always been the case. But here's the thing. Because we were recruiting noobs and because these noobs were coming in contact with players like me, players like Joey, players like Blue even, and many more. Many more had come off the list, like Four Ninth David, he was a very good player back in the day. Four Ninth Bobby, he was a later player of the Four Ninth after this iteration of it. There were a lot of skilled players that came into the Four Ninth, and there were also a lot of noobs that came into the Four Ninth. But the reason why this is important is because, unlike other clans, even the clans of the Golden Age, we brought the noobs and the pro players together in such a way that the noobs would have an opportunity to learn the game. They'd have an opportunity to learn the game and become a new pro player which would add to the activity of the community overall. When you have a community like NTW is, it's a very small elite type knit community. Not very many people come in and there are not very many people in the first place. And so any new players, especially those who are able to adopt the skill level of the current players, is a very, very valuable trait. And that is a trait that the Four Ninth had in abundance. And the Four Ninth, even back then, was the only clan that facilitated this type of interaction. There were other clans who tried it on smaller scales, but none on the scale that the Four Ninth did. The Four Ninth reached its helping hand out to the noobs of the game. And we elevated many of these noobs to the level, and many of the current players that you know now was probably influenced or was a former recruit of the Four Ninth. Another reason why the Four Knife was very important is because the Four Knife contained the traits of the Golden Age. The Four Knife, specifically me, the leader of the Four Knife, I saw what the Golden Age was like. I saw the things that were done back then. I saw what people did, the effort they put into to make the community active. I saw the things that made the community fun. More people come into the community, basically. And so, the Four Knife was my attempt to control the community. I wanted dominance over the community like any other clan does. This is what clans do. They fight for control of the community. To be the most dominant clan in the community. Once you're the most dominant clan, you can influence the direction of the community. And so the Four Ninth fought for control of this community and it arguably got control briefly. Very briefly. We had a we had a very brief taste of the number one spot of the community. We had slaughtered Unity around the time that we first came into NTW. You know, back then the Four Ninth was a force to be reckoned with when it first entered NTW because we were coming off of years of fighting clans like TSR. We were coming off of years of interacting and mingling with the NTW communities that were still around back then. And so Four Ninth got very powerful at one point. We really truly did. And it was off of this power that the Four Ninth did have a shot to control the community. But as I said, just like the first time that the Four Ninth fell, the things were just not meant to be. Things did not shake out in a way to where Four Ninth could legibly dominate the community. You know, largely because I wasn't able to maintain it on a time basis. I, I did not have the free time to manage the Four Ninth the way that other clan leaders could manage their clans. And so, I lost my shot to spread the influence and to spread the traits throughout the community that promoted the Golden Age. I wanted to create, at least in the NCW community, all the conditions that facilitated the original Golden Age. And one of these things was facilitating the interaction between elite players and noobs. Because if you don't have this interaction, then you don't generate new pro players. And without new pro players, well, the pro player population, the elite player population is going to dwindle until there's nothing left. And then the community dies, and then there's no fun for anybody now, is it? I didn't want that, you don't want that, and that is what the Four Nights mission largely was on one level. It, yes, I'm not going to lie to you, the Four Nights was like any other clan. 
it was like any other clan or the fact that it wanted to dominate and it wanted to rule. But at the same time, it was also the only clan that retained the will and the motivation and the knowledge of the Golden Age and wanted to reestablish that, at least on some level, in these dark times that we now find ourselves in. Because here's what ended up happening. What ended up happening is that the 409th, it declined because I no longer had the free time to manage it. We were no longer able to find Atmos to run it for me. And the 409th, because of this decline, times got hard and this allowed elements within the 409th, elements to rise up and cause a civil war, a rift. And so this rift, this splinter faction that sprouted up within the 409th, they were known as the Insects. And the Insects are the current dominant clan of NTW, and oh my god. The Insects, not only did they go against everything that the Four Knights stood for, but they accelerated the decline of the NTW community. And I will go into detail about why. So the group you now know is the Insects. These players, Linden, Vilbil, uh, what's that other guy's name? Purpur, what else? Crokill, you know, Red, all these players, Warren. All these players that are part of the group known as Insects, you could also probably throw Theodore in there too. All these players, you know, they, they started off as a splinter faction of the 409th. You know, and they, they rebelled, they did their own little thing, and they largely wanted to control the community for themselves. That's what it really boils down to. Which is why if you come at them with the, hey, aren't you guys former 409th? They're going to be very hostile to that notion because they want to sever all ties to their past with the 409th. But four out of the five members were very strongly affiliated with the four knight, and three of them were former members, in fact. So, I mean, I, like, that's basically what it boils down to. But they got greedy, they got power hungry, and they were very short sighted, and they were very ignorant of the mission of, and the philosophy of the four knight as a whole. You know, these were guys who were recruited in the latter half of when the four knight was in its final collapse. And they want to claim a lot more credit when they do acknowledge their past in the 409th. They want to claim a lot more credit than they deserve. You know, but the thing is, is that these guys would rather rule in hell than serve in heaven. Because not only are they ignorant of the Golden Age, not only are they ignorant of the things that 409th did and what the purpose of the 409th was, but they've also, instead of promoting that interaction between the noobs and the elite players, Instead of facilitating the conditions that would lead to a new golden age in the NTW community, like I wanted to, no, all these guys did was they funneled that position of dominance into gassing up their own narcissistic ego. So now they get to bask in the glory of, oh, we're the best dominant clan in NTW, and we're just going to bask in that, and we're not going to contribute anything of value, we're not going to bring in new players, we're not going to, we're not going to facilitate events, we're not going to you know, engage with the community, we're not going to promote good audible values and, you know, all that good stuff like the Golden Age did. No, we're not going to do any of that. We're just going to sit on our butt. We're going to play. We're going to beat people. We're going to pick on people. We're going to bully them. We're going to, you know, soak up all the admiration that people give us for being such good players. And, yeah, like, they are a rebellion faction of the four night. They grew to be very powerful. And they grew to a point where they could drown out my voice. And they could be the only dominant voice and the only narrative that people see nowadays in the NTW community. And they've largely succeeded in that. Congratulations. Here's your reward. The reward for you beating me, you know, in your little civil war to split from the four and I. Here's your reward. The reward is that the NTW is in a terminal decline now. The NCW community was already down bad, but now it's irrecoverable because now these guys have promoted values and virtues and narratives that run completely contrary to anything that's going to promote new players coming in, contrary to any healthy competitive environment. You know, nowadays clans, whatever ones that are left, there aren't very many clans left nowadays, but the ones that are left, you know, they're, they're too scared to even face each other nowadays. Like, what is this? Back during the Golden Age, clans were very gung-ho and very motivated to face each other. Even on a casual basis. They didn't even have to be serious all the time. Now you can't even get clans to face each other casually. And that's a real shame, and this is largely what the influence of the insects has caused. Basically the opposite, you know. 
like I said, the Four Knights and Insects, it was a civil war. They were a splinter faction of the Four Knights. And they won the Civil War, and they went basically the complete opposite direction of what the Four Knights was, stood, was standing for. And now the consequences are what they are. And this is why the NCW community is so down on the dumps as it is. Because if you ask any pro player these days who still plays, there aren't very many of them left, but just ask any of them. Ask them. What was it better to be in? Was NCW better back in the day, or is it better now? Nine times out of ten, if they were there long enough to have seen like what it was like back in the day, all of them will say it was better back back then. You know, it's not good now. It's not better now. Definitely, the only players who would say otherwise are going to be people who came up, you know, within the last few years or so. They don't know anything. They didn't see the golden age. You know, these people are too young to have saw the things that I saw. And you know, that's just where NCW stands today. Largely because a rebellious faction of the Four Knight won. And that is why the Four Knight was important and why his collapse and why the Four Knight falling has led to some dire consequences. Consequences of which I'm not sure this community can recover from. So why should you care? You should care because not only have these fools ruined a, a great competitive game community, but this is one of the few games out there left that possessed emergent gameplay that was still modern enough to where the game looks good and it looks great and it's got very sound competitive mechanics because if, if you haven't noticed the recent Total War games are dog shit they're largely dog shit none of the good none of the recent Total Wars are good for competitive play you can't play these games online multiplayer like at least not in a sense that it's going to be you know like that the mechanics just don't work for competitive play in the modern Total War games so Napoleon happens to be one of those Total War games to where the game is modern enough to where it looks good and it's very mechanically sound and technically sound and you can still run it on most PCs because it's not like the super old Total Wars, you know, like Shogun 1 where you gotta have like Windows 98 to run that shit or whatever and like it's not like the, the recent Total Wars where it's like okay it's a lot of gay features, there's a lot of single entity units, you click a button, you hit a nuke and you win and all this dumb shit that Total War has become in modern times. Napoleon Total War exists in that sweet spot. There's a collection of games in the sweet spot, ranging from Rome 1 up to about Shogun 2, that are in the sweet spot to where the Total War community is still viable, as it was back in the day, but it was going to take work. It's going to take work, it's going to take effort, and it's going to take people who remember what the Golden Times were like. But this is why you should care. Because these fools have ruined it for Napoleon, okay? I don't see any scenario where things are going to recover from this because like they've caused it, they, they basically created the conditions to where the remaining elite players in this game are just too scared to face each other, there's too much bad blood, there's no like community, there's no like good, you know, interaction between the pro players except for the ones who, you know, there there is a glimmer of hope in the NCW and I'll get to that in a little bit, but for the most part, they've, they've broken the trust between the elite players here due to their actions, due to their narratives, and due to their lies, their many, many lies, and their narrative to try to gas themselves up for that short-term gratification because maybe their lives suck so much in real life that they gotta feel good on a video game, okay? Now, Napoleon was one of the last such games to where, you know, it was still a very sound Total War game to, faci to facilitate what a fraction of what we had in the golden age but like i said it's gonna take work it's gonna take effort and it's gonna take people who have a working knowledge of how this will function controlling the community and the four ninth died that vision that dream that effort to make the community you know to salvage what we had that effort died with the four ninth because i don't see anybody else aside from what i'm going to mention in a little bit trying to bring that dream back to what it was Okay, Unity is not going to do that. Unity is a joke as far as anything, as far as like philosophy, like values, like you know, promoting competitive play. Unity are largely cowards. You know, he, like it's, I respect their leader Crucible, you know, and their former leader Talfor, I, I do respect them as players, but their clan did not facilitate the things that 4 or 9 would have facilitated. I'm sorry, this is not the case. And any other clan 
that's going to arise, you know, after that, these guys don't have a working knowledge of the Golden Age. Because what's going to happen is that, okay, the elite players dwindle down to such an extent, nobody's even going to know how to play the game in a serious manner anymore. Okay? Or at least not in any real numbers or not. Like, you're going to see a lot of noobs dominate the community. You're going to see a lot of historical battles. You're going to see a lot of people playing with artillery. You know, doing things that are stupid. Playing the game in a completely dumb, inefficient way that's not competitively viable. You know, the, the community's just going to become like a noob fest. And you can't get, like, that level of play and that level of, you know, competitive spirit. Well, you've got nothing but noobs in the community now because you've driven away all the elite players. And so that is why you should care. Because NTW is one of the last such places where you can facilitate these kinds of interactions, these kinds of entry, this kind of, of fun like we used to have back in the old days. It's ruined. It's gone. Now, there is a group, ironically enough, that has become on the rise again. There is an old clan from back in the day named TSR. They they did, they weren't old back in the day, but they're old now. You know, just due to how long this is going on. But TSR is on the rise again, and they they are largely a group of players who do, like myself, remember the golden age. Now they may not be as inclined to do as much for the community as I was, but. They do know, largely speaking, what I mean when I say Golden Age. And these are players who were around back then, and these are players who have the virtues and the, and the integrity that was expected, that held up the community back then. Now, a lot of work needs to be done. A lot of work needs to be done as far as, like, you know, bringing back the interaction, bringing back all of the interactions that were typical back in those days, to bring back the competitive spirit, to bring back the hosting of events, you know, all this stuff. I don't think TSR is going to be able to do all of this that I was planning to do with the 409, but they remain probably the last hope for the NCW community. If they aren't able to bring back a smither of the golden age, at the very least, they can rid the community of the influence of the insects, which is kind of what I'm hoping happens. And you know, I've even thrown my own lot in with TSR. I'm an admin in TSR now, okay? Like, I, I give them my full support because Fortnite is finished. Fortnite isn't coming back. And I've largely kind of got to accept that nowadays. And that's just that, you know? It's sad. It's tragic. I miss my clan. I really do. But it's more than likely not going to ever, ever come back because, you know, I had events in my life make it such that I couldn't run the clan during the pivotal moments. And it's not going to get any better in the future. I'm an adult now. I've got adult responsibilities. And, like, I'm not going to get free time nowhere near what I had back when the Four Nights was started. So, that's just where it stands now. The Four Nights is never going to come back. And I've got to accept that. And I've got to also accept that most likely the vision I saw for NTW to relive the glory days, to have his golden age back in some capacity, it's never going to happen because he was ruined by a bunch of traitors from my old clan. And that is where things largely stand. And yeah. So for those of you who have made it to this stage of the video, this is very late in, it's about 20 minutes or so. What I'm going to do now is more than likely you're seeing a video that I think is the battle that killed the four knight. This battle right here, this battle you're seeing here on Syrian Ridge. This is a 4 9th versus Unity battle. And all of the videos that you've seen up to this point, all the Total War footage that you've seen up to this point have all been 4 9th battles. It's either been 4 9th versus 4 9th or 4 9th versus other clans. You can see from most of this footage that, you know, the 4 9th had some very skilled players. They knew what they were doing, typically. And a lot of people give the 4 9th a bad rep. They call it a noob clan. They say, oh, it's a bunch of noobs and this and that. I'm sick of this narrative, okay? I'm very sick of this narrative because it's not true. I explained to you in this video what the 4 9th was all about. The 4 9th was open to recruiting noobs and we were open to training noobs into elite players. That is what the 4 9th did and we we can have, there's a lot of players today in the community who can credit their skill level to the 4 9th, okay? Because otherwise they'd just be some nameless noob that you never knew about. 
but there's several players like this in the community, okay? And just because you find some noob who's wearing the Fortnite tag, you know, some guy that we recruited because he saw some potential in him and you wanted to train him up, if you beat this guy and he has a Fortnite tag on, oh my god, that means the Fortnite are noobs. No, son. A lot of people have done stuff just like that. Scenarios like that are so common with the Fortnite back in the day. You know, they, they find some guy that we that had a little bit of potential and we recruited him and we were training him up, but before that happened, they, they encountered this guy, they beat him. Ha ha, like four nights of noobs, ha ha ha, like that's this is why I get so freaking like ate up and why I get so heated and triggered when people make fun of my clan like that, you know? And it's so look, the battle that you're seeing right now. This is the four. This is the last battle, the last major clan battle that the Fortnite fought in its pure form. This is uh, Fortnite versus Unity. I believe this is the battle that actually ended the Fortnite because largely how clans exist is that they they dominate other clans. They're supposed to beat other clans, and if you go losing battles, your members are going to lose respect for your clan, and then they're going to leave. And in this battle. Okay, so on the Unity side you have Linden. Linden is a Fortnite member. He's been much more of a Fortnite member than he was a Unity member. But during this time he happened to be in Unity. And on my side there's Bill Bill, who again, you know he's an insect now. And there's also Fortnite Dutch, who never joined the insects. He remained loyal to the Fortnite. But th this is the point I'm trying to make here. I believe this is the battle that killed Fortnite. And this is the battle that planted the seeds of, okay, we're going to leave and start our own thing within Kill Bill and uh, Linden. You know, I call Vil Bill Kill Bill. It's just my little nickname for him. But Kill Bill and Linden, they, they were there to witness this battle, okay? And they took this as, oh, Unity's better than the four or ninth, and they're the dumb little squirrel brain. I believe this is the first stage of what planted the seeds of, okay, we're going to start insects, and we're going to, like, you know, fuck four or ninth. Screw it, like we're gonna just, you know, Dion's a noob, this and that, haha, -ha. like This is the thing, like, they, they had none of the virtues, like they had none of the virtues of the four ninth, basically. These were two players who recruited in the latter half of the four ninth's life. Okay, so they didn't experience the golden age, they didn't experience the, the triumph of the four ninth during 2016. They didn't experience any of this stuff. They came in at 2017 at the at the earliest. Okay, this is during the, the dark times of the Fortnite, when things were already very shaky for the clan. But Fortnite still has some fight in it as late as 2018, and I believe this is when this battle happened. And you know, like, it's not like we completely lost this battle either, okay? Like, this battle was actually really close, despite the player uh, disparity here, you know, because Lennon was facing me. Linden, I will admit, is a better player than me, obviously, but I held my own for a long time, okay? Athos and Crucible are also very good players. These are not slouches we're up against here. And despite that, we held our own in this battle. So it's not like they completely blew us out. Fortnite could have won this battle. There's a million different ways Fortnite could have won this battle. It was so close. It was close enough to where we could have won, and you'll see that. But I'm going to spend the rest of this battle... I'm going to spend the rest of this video giving commentary on this battle and showing you that when the four ninth fielded a serious clan lineup, when we fielded a serious lineup, okay, it, we weren't slouches. The four ninth more often than not would win as clan battles. This is the thing. Four ninth recruited noobs so it could train them, and we had a lot of pro players and we had a lot of skilled elites within the clan that we could fill at any point if you wanted a clan match. And more often than not, we won these clan matches. That is a fact. I'm sick of this tired old narrative that it was a noob clan, because it was not. Okay, we recruited noobs, we trained noobs, but we had skilled players too, many of which would have beaten you. Okay? And, like, I, I was there to keep record. Fortnite usually didn't lose the, the matches that it had, up until probably about the end times of it, when things were starting to fall apart a little bit. So, I'm going to quit rambling here. And I'm going to just give commentary on this battle. Please enjoy. So as you can see, the match is on. This match is myself. I'm playing as Great Britain. Linda is my opponent, my direct opponent in this match. He's playing as Prussia. Our other two allies, my two allies are Bill Bill and Dutch. 
They're both playing as Ottomans and Lendis allies at Athos and Crucible. They're playing as France. You can see this is a very interesting faction setup and a very interesting lineup here. And as you can see right here, in this part the battle's been sped up by two times. Linden has made a very rapid pace to push me on my side of the map. You can see the overview map with the units lined up. He has pushed me out of the central forest in the middle of the map. And now I am holding on to this very last position here on the edge of the map. Trying desperately do whatever I can to hold on to this position. Because this position right here is going to be what decides the game basically. It's what decides the game. We're making a lot of back and forth right here over this position. As he was advancing, he made such a rapid pace advancing towards me that by the time he got here, I had hidden some units right here in this force, and this is why I'm putting up such a stubborn resistance right here. You can see even Crucible, I think that's Crucible. No, actually that's Athos. It's probably Athos. Athos is the center of France. Athos or Crucible, which, whichever one of them sent over units to help Linden clear out that position. But I'm still stubbornly holding on over there. And over here in the center, you know, Linden, because of how fast Linden pushed me out of this position, they now control part of the force there in the center. And are now trading fire with, uh, I believe, Dotch right there in the middle. And as you can see, this fight is still raging on. One of uh, either Dodge or Vilbil has sent over his Ottoman calf to back me up over here. I'm sending in more and more line units to try and hold this position because again, this is critical. This position right here is literally deciding the fate of the 409. It is that fucking serious. Like, we're fighting hard. We're, we're exchanging units. You know, they're doing everything they can to break this position, and we're doing everything we can to hold it. Now this fight is going to go on for almost as long as the battle itself is going to go on. If you pull over to this side over here though, Vilbil is making a push against Crucible here on this side. Crucible is laid in stakes at the top of that hill. That's going to make it difficult for uh, Vilbil to really push the way he wants to, but somehow, some way, he's going to do it anyway. He's going to do it anyway. And you can see he, uh, Crucible has got Lying us up on that hill, raining down fire upon Vilbil. Vilbil's got to do something really fast here, or else he's going to get annihilated by these French units, these French lines, this French calf. Crucible has everything he needs to hold this position. And if Vilbil doesn't push the initiative on this attack very soon, well, he's going to get wiped out before he even begins the attack. You can see Vilbil made a push there with his calf right there against that line unit. He was able to connect with it. He's going to probably win that little section right there, then he's going to counter charge over here against these line, lines that uh, Crucible has shooting at him. Crucible missed the square right there with the line unit. Vilbil caught him with two line for two horses from both sides, and that unit's going to be really messed up. So, Vilbil is making steady progress over here. He even got, uh, I think that's a sword unit over there, that he got past the stakes. He's over there hitting into the line unit, but the, the sword unit got decimated, of course, so... Kill Bill is actually making a steady push over here. He's actually making a steady push. You can see he took up that section of the, of the hill. He was able to use his calf to clear out those lines. And now Crucible only has two lines over here near the forest that he's using to try and hold on somehow, some way. But Kill Bill still has plenty of calf left. And he's bringing over more units, either that or Dutch is bringing over more units to assist him. And you can see there's one line, two lines. There, there's multiple lines over here against Crucible. Crucible's no longer able to hold that hill, and he's gonna have to fall back, which is what he's doing now. So, Kill Bill has won the position over here on this side for the hill. Kill Bill has won, he's advancing over the hill. And he's going to be able to push the fight further in the opposite direction that Lennon has pushed the fight on the other, complete other side. Now I think Kill Bill is going to get bogged down here because Crucible still has an entire force from which he can continue to fight from. And he's going to have a bit of an advantage fighting from that forest. But 
it's anyone's game. It's still anyone's game. Like, it really does come down to, okay, is Kill Bill going to play well enough to clear out this position without taking too many losses? Now, over here, Lennon has eventually won that forest that we were fighting over. He has eventually won, he has eventually pushed me back into the open desert, into the spawn area. But, be as it may, you know, as far back as I've been pushed, my army is still very much alive here, and I'm still putting up quite a bit of resistance. All I am doing at this stage is I'm trying to buy time for Kill Bill or Dodge to do something on their fronts. And I think I'm doing a good job with this, you know. Traditionally, we all know that Lennon is a better player than me, and the best I can hope for is to stall and buy time, generally, unless they're going to give me a lot of support, but that's not to say that Athos and Crucible isn't giving Lennon a lot of support, because they are. So the fact that I've been able to stall Lennon this entire match, this, la this match was very long. This match was very, very long. I fast forwarded, I started doing the commentary over halfway through the match. So, I've managed to stall Lennon, you will see, for basically the entire duration of this battle. And I stalled it long enough to where Kill Bill or Dodge could have won the match, but that's not what's going to end up happening. And I know I'm spoiling this quite a bit. I already told you that, you know, Unity Base 3 ended up winning this match, but it wasn't a blowout victory for them. They, this was a hard fought victory for Unity. This entire, the entire point of showing this uh, battle is just to show you one of the last matches that Four Knife fought and to show you that, hey, Four Knife was not some new plan. You know, Four Knife generally did put up fights as well as this, or we just outright won, is what it was, nine times out of ten. You know, like, just look at the overview map, you can see, like, the my side's been pushed back quite significantly into the spawn area, but so too is theirs on the other side. Kill Bill has managed to push Crucible all the way back, and I think the reason why Kill Bill has been able to make the progress that he has made is largely because Crucible is probably sending units over to support Linden. Linden by now has pushed all the way into my spawn area, okay? Linden has done a phenomenal job for Unity in this game. and. Be as it may, I've also done a phenomenal job holding out as long as I have. But pretty soon here, the battle's going to reach its logical conclusion, you know, should Kill Bill or Dodge not pull something off from their side. Because it's getting down to the point where I'm getting more and more forced into a position where I'm no longer able to avoid Linden now. I've lost a lot of units, I've lost a lot of manpower. You know, I'm already back into my spawn area, I'm up against the red line. You know, things are falling apart slowly but surely and like it's getting to a point now where more and more I'm being forced to stand and fight Lenny. And being that I've lost so many more units than him at this point, you know, well, I've still got a sizable army to still hold out, but Lenny has got more units than me. A lot more by this point. And I'm being forced in a position where I'm up against the red line and I've got to fight. And if I fight, I'm going to get decimated. So you can see the balance of power has heavily shifted in their favor now. It's basically GG right here. The, the balance of power is telling us that yes, this is a GG for Unity. All we're doing now is trying to get as many kills as we can possibly squeeze out at this point. Because I've already been forced into the position where I've had to stand and fight. And that's a fight I'm not going to win. Uh, I believe this is Dotch here in the center. Dotch is still over here, you know, doing what little bit he can do to squeeze out more kills from Athos. But Linden is sending over three units here across the hill to finish off Dotch. Kill Bill, I believe, has also himself encountered some trouble trying to chase down Crucible after his attack. I think Crucible was able to hide in the forest here. He was able to whittle down the Kill Bill enough to where he was just able to beat Kill Bill on his own. So, I'm down and out, you know, I'm up against the red line being finished off, you know, Dodge, he's over here being surrounded by both Athos and Linden's units now, and I believe Crucible too from the other side, and Crucible after, you know, falling back from Kill Bill's attack, he was able to finish off Kill Bill by himself, 
So, and another thing to add insult to injury too was that all three of our generals were, were killed in this battle. All three of our generals got killed. So this is GG for Unity. Again, this is one of the last matches that we had against Unity as a clan. You can see the results here. This is the battle that I believe ended the 4 night. Anyways, this is the end of the video. I will see you guys later. Peace. And I know a lot of ignorant people would love to say, well of course Unity won because Unity's just better. But let me tell you something. Prior to this match happening, this is probably one of the first times that Unity really beat us as a clan. This is one of the first times they really ever beat us in any serious sense. And this is what Linden on their team too. Linden was a 4 ninth player. Okay, Linden was 4 ninth for the most part. Much more so than he was Unity. So this is the first match where they really actually beat us. This is the first match where it was like, okay, Unity has enjoyed like a like a pretty good like match against us to where, you know, basically I could sit here and I could be immature and I could post all the screenshots of all the times Fortnite beat Unity. I could sit here and use the rest of this video just to do that. Just to prove, yeah, Unity, they weren't shit compared to Fortnite back in the day. I could do that, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to because I don't need to. I don't want to insult Fortnite's legacy by being petty like that. Okay? I didn't put, I didn't put any screenshots in this video for that reason. I don't need to prove that the 409th was, you know, was big and bad and this and that. I just want to, I just want the truth addressed as it was that 409th was not a new clan. 409th did put up a very good fight. Most of the time did it participate in the clan matches. You know, especially if I was there. You know, and I want to prove the point that 409th did not go out with a whimper. It went out with its honor intact as far as I'm concerned. Because 4 9th was never defeated in the field at its full strength. And when it was at its full strength, like not very many clan players were were brave enough to even go against us. And that is the way I would like to remember 4 9th. And that is the way I would like 4 9th to be remembered. And since so many people have such a, a negative attitude and they have such a, you know, they called 4 9th a new clan and this or that. Since so many people do that, well, this is why this video is being made now. To set the record straight once and for all. And until somebody makes a video of equal quality and of equal length and of equal credibility that says otherwise, until somebody does that, I think this is going to settle it for the, the rest of however long. And I can move on with my life. And this is what this is about for me at this point. I miss my clan. I miss the 409th. But unfortunately, I don't think I can bring it back. I don't think it's going to come back. And I'd be more than happy to allow its legacy to rest easy with honor, with glory, and knowing the truth that the 409th was the greatest clan in 2016. And that is an accomplishment that most clans cannot even make. Because most clans don't even make it half as far as the 409th did. And I can hang my hat on that. I would like to see the Total War community, specifically the NTW community, go back to what it experienced during the Golden Age. Maybe TSR can pull it off. Maybe I can make things happen as an admin of TSR now, because that is largely where my effort lies. We shall see. We shall see how things shake out, but ultimately, I want to have fun when I log on to this fucking game anymore. And that's what it's always been about. What's fun to me is enjoying this game, this very complex, very, you know, emergent gameplay full of... It, this game has emergent gameplay. You can make things happen that weren't necessarily designed by the developers to happen. And that's what makes the game interesting. I would like to enjoy this game with friends and with respectful people is what it boils down to for me today. And if I can make the community conducive to that, then I will. But this has been Emperor Dion. And that's just my opinion. And if you don't agree, well, I've been very reasonable in this video, I think. So if you don't agree, well, you can blow me. I'm signing off now. Peace. And remember, always, always 
shun the noob. Okay, don't shun the noob. But always maintain the skill, the honor, and the integrity of the elite community. And you make sure you educate the noobs to do the same. I'm going to sign off now. Peace.